Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another episode of On the Couch with Creatives. I say good morning because I'm here in the UK, but good afternoon or good evening if you're anywhere else in the world. I'm Melanie Perry. And I'm Julie hyde Mew, And this is On the Couch with Creatives. Fans of the show will know that we're part of the Creatives Group, the private network for creative professionals everywhere. Together, we help you create at your best, connect you with like-minded individuals, therefore helping you to grow your creative business. If that sounds like a good idea to you, please get in contact with us after the show. We'd love to chat to you about it. But as I said, this is On The Couch. So Julie, who have we got on the couch today? Well, on the couch today is artist, illustrator and animator Chanel Richardson. Chanel creates memorable images for memorable projects, whether she's working on children's books, on companies' image and marketing packages or just works of art. And when I say just works of art, Chanel has sold more than 350 commissioned pieces of art. So she's much in demand. She's really good at rapid sketching. So we're going to be putting her through her paces today. Chanel originally comes from Kent in the UK, but she's now living in Sweden. So all the way from Sweden, let's get Chanel on the couch. Hello, Chanel. Welcome to On the Couch with Creatives. Hello. Thanks for having me. Well, you're more than welcome, and we're looking forward to talking to you. So let's kick off with um, the obvious question. Um, you have a talent as an oh, artist. Thank you. <laughs> Obviously. Um, I'm the sort of person who uh, can draw stick figures, and that's about it. Uh, so I'm always impressed with people who can just uh, – draw something and it actually looks like something. Um, so to st start off with um, your childhood. When did you realize that you had this artistic talent? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I started drawing from as soon as I could pick up a pencil, pretty much. Um, my mum said it was actually one of my first words was art, <laughs> which I don't know how true it is. Maybe I was just making noises, but I like to think that that was true. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I've always loved art, all kinds of art. Um, I found it really inspiring and um, you know the artists that are in museums and galleries um, and then being inspired by anime art and cartoonists and all sorts and uh, stuff like that it, like all of it excites me so yeah. Did you find that you were encouraged in this at school because Melanie's big bugbear is that of course if there are any cuts in education they'll cut the arts first? Right. Um, actually, funny enough, uh, I was in a fortunate situation that I think any teacher that I had would know that I sort of just love to draw because I'd always be doodling. It doesn't matter what the lesson is. I'm always doodling. Um, I think that it is a very interesting thing because I did go to a technology college as well. So that might also have something to do with it. Um, of course, you're, you know, you're made to sort of like pursue other things as well. Um, but yeah, thankfully, my family was very supportive and the school was supportive enough. <laughs> I suppose it makes a difference when you do have parents who support your special interests. Right. Yeah. Um, I think my mom always knew, like, she was like, well, art is your thing. And like my family, art is your thing. Everyone around me, like, I'm so thankful for, you know, my support network. I can imagine because there are a lot, there are a lot of people who don't get that support as artists because it's not seen as a proper job. Yeah. You know, and exactly. again, that's why a lot of artists do struggle with pricing in their businesses. You know, we see yeah. it a lot. Is that people, well, when are you going to get a real job? And what's your what's your real thing that you do? And, you know, yeah. children getting told off for doodling. Um, you know, my son, exactly the same. He's very creative and he gets told off. They, at school, they have whiteboard, like whiteboards that they have to work out their stuff on. And yeah. he's constantly getting his taken away from him because he's his his drawing. It, and the teacher said, it's fantastic. He creates these wonderful works of art, but that's not what he should be doing. And I just said to the last parent safety, I said, he's an artist. Deal with it. He is never going to need maths in his life. I'm not that bothered, frankly. Just encourage him in the art, please. Thank you. Yeah. I, I even reflected on this the other day because... I quite enjoyed the learning part of school. I didn't enjoy school. I'm just going to, you know, put that right there. Um, but uh, I think it's a very interesting thing how we sort of 
raise kids to strive to be all rounders and all, you know, great at everything. You have to be great at maths. You have to be great at English and science. Otherwise you're not going to get, you know, anywhere successful or whatever in life, which isn't true because we shouldn't, you know, we, we don't need to raise scientists slash mathematicians slash biologists slash, you know, you have your thing. We can't all be good at everything. Um, and I do think, you know, there is definitely a discrepancy. And I, I do think that, and kids that have more sort of like creative skills aren't necessarily encouraged as much as the more academically gifted um, kids. Um, yeah. And we do see it, I think, in adult life, actually, is where <laughs> I sort of see it more because now that I do art as like a thing, um, you know, we, we see it with like pricing structures. We wouldn't, you know, uh, do certain things or like certain like haggling and things like that just don't occur in certain industries but with art and creative things it's sort of commonplace and it's very interesting to see so tell us what kind of work you do because um we know you illust you've illustrated children's books you work with a lot of companies corporations uh, do a lot of corporate work give us an overview of of the kind of work that you do as an artist yeah, absolutely. Um, so some of the work is um, sort of graphic novels. So right now I'm working on a graphic novel with a client. Uh, My Roots Go Deep, which is super exciting. Um, I also do some animation uh, as promotion for companies as well. Um, and I have done 3D as well. Um, so I'm kind of uh, what you would call a generalist. Um, which was <laughs> such a dirty word when I was at uni because it's it's sort of like a thing that you're meant to specialize in uh, certain things. Um, but I would think that's wonderful because you can turn your hand to anything. Right. Um, I have never been one to sort of like just have a thing and just sort of like do the thing over and over again. I mean, I did have periods of time where I was infatuated by certain types of art, like say I had my anime phase, you know, I had my, um, you know, cartoon phase and only doing sort of cartoon and realism and this and that. So, um, but I always just see interest in so much. Um, I, I just love to learn and explore and, and try different things. And it's really kind of a, you know, a flex in my eyes to be uh, sort of given this uh, opportunity to do it professionally as well. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I love that because I, I get, I get, I get really sort of icky when people say you have to niche. No, I don't. <laughs> No, I don't. I'm more open-minded than that. Thank you very much. Um, you tell Billy to do specialize. anything and she'll say, no, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I won't. I'm really bad for that. If anyone tells me, it's like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing that it now. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's true. It's kind of like, I, I think to have a broader skill set that you can turn your hand to something. Because if you are, and pandemics on this as well, you know, if you're too niche, if you're too specialist in that one thing, and that one thing goes down. Yeah. So many people sort of had to like panic pivot because their income streams got cut off. You know, most successful entrepreneurs will tell you or successful people will tell you, you know, you have to have multiple income streams. And the way to have multiple income streams is to have a multiple skill set. You know, so my advice to, to anybody listening to this is, is don't be too ready to the people that tell you you have to niche down you don't do the things that you love do the things that you like you were saying that, that interest you and if you're a true artist you know you do you have phases of things don't you you'll go oh, I really love this sort of thing and you might have months of focusing on that particular thing or or then it will switch and I think that's actually very healthy oh yeah I mean I think especially in this current climate we are sort of challenge to think of things in a different way when it comes to creativity and the whole sort of artistic journey and you know what is creativity even and for me creativity is always a way of like seeing things differently and trying different things and having like you know using your imagination and utilizing that and really um trusting the process more so than just the end result um and so I think it's a really sort of like interesting place that we're at um, now where I think 
now people like have multiple sources of income. Like I think the sort of like just having just one job that you do for, you know, ev- all people, I think now it's like, it's very commonplace to have like multiple sources of income and realize that actually, you, you know, you don't just have one thing that you have to do. You can have something on the side, side hustles. So many people have an Etsy or an eBay or something like that and realizing that, oh yeah, I have like skills and, you know, management or other things like that and really sort of exploring things. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it's interesting. One thing that I have noticed on social media when it comes to children's authors is that they're always looking for illustrators, good illustrators, at the lowest price possible. Oh, yes. um, so how do you, what is the average or general um, cost of an illustrator and obviously if you are an amazing illustrator and you're very well established and well renowned obviously your price is going to get higher and higher the the more established you become Um, so what do you actually charge when it comes to illustrating a children's book yeah um, well that price for some reason I'm thinking in dollars as well so excuse me but and it can cost anywhere from a thousand to maybe even five thousand. It really does depend on the number of illustrations, the level of detail, whether you want formatting and book design included. Um, because I think the pitfalls that a lot of uh, authors, maybe new authors, um, self self published authors might come across is that they focus too much on the illustration which seems a bit radical for me to say as an illustrator, but they don't think of how the illustration is really meant to work for them with, as a product, more so than just something nice to look at with your writing. Um, You know, illustrations are an investment that can be used for promotion and to actually get your book noticed by people. This is the face of your book at the end of the day. Um, and just like how you would pay, I mean, I'm in sort of bridal mode at the moment because I'm getting married this year. It's like making an investment into, say, getting a photographer. You know, this is something that you are going to be looking at years down the line. It needs to hold up. Um, you know, your illustration, unless you're planning on doing several editions of like your first children's book or your second children's book. Um, you know, it's, you want it to be something that really represents what it is that you're going for. And on top of that, it's not only the illustrations, right? It's the revisions. It's making sure that it is actually representative of your vision, that it actually sells in that, um, that industry and for that market, you know, at the end of the day, pay cheap, pay twice. It's, it really does sometimes come down to it. (laughs) Yeah, it does. And 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 this thought, this mindset of some people who are again starting out who, who think, you know, oh, I'm starting out, I've got this really great idea for this this book, it's gonna be fabulous. But obviously I'm just starting out, so I've got no money, and I want you the best illustrator to, to do it for no money. It's not gonna happen. You know, if you're looking to um write a book that you're going to sell, you need to map that process out as a business proposition. You know, how would you feel as an author if someone said, oh, here's my book and it's $12.99 and someone says, no, I'll give you 50p for it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) How would you you feel? How would you feel? And that's what you're asking an illustrator to do. Give you all their skills, all their expertise, all their time. And you're like, you want all of this wrapped up in a bow for like 99p because, oh, you can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can't afford it, tough. Go to AI, get some AI generated images that might just do the job until you can afford to get someone better. Or you start a business plan and you start almost pre-selling your idea before you get to the point so that you've got pre-orders backing up and then you can get an illustration. It's a process to it. You don't just leap in, oh, I can't afford it. Can you do it for free? No, I can't. Plan the process. How much is it going to cost? It's going to cost me a thousand pounds for this illustrator. Right. Okay. How many pre-orders do I need to get in so that I can afford that? Yes, absolutely. And I think uh, if I can just add on this, I don't want to, because this could become the whole like topic (laughs) of this interview. Um, I think what a lot of authors don't really take into account is it's really the run up. If you have no 
base if you have no actual interest no people sort of like lining up actually interested in this book maybe you aren't in a place to even consider sort of like putting payments down you need to really at least invest time or money and if you're not willing to invest either then maybe consider whether or not it's even worthwhile pursuing um because you can make up for things with you know a lot of time and promoting and and for really next to no money um you know you can promote the sort of outline for your book and get people interested and hooked on and keep people involved in the process or start up a fundraiser you can do all of these things that indicate to people that you are serious about making a product that really works that is worth the money because honestly self of the things that I'm seeing on the market isn't really worth the money, okay? Nobody really wants to pay for a chat GPT written book with AI art that you put no time or effort into. No one actually cares. Like, if you're making something that is from the heart, that you've really put time and, you know, thought into, then shout about it. You can do so without, you know, the illustrations, without even having things confirmed. Because you need to indicate to people that, are maybe interested in working with you to make this a reality that you are serious, that it is actually going to sell. I think it would be the same thing if you were looking for a traditional publisher. What are you bringing to the table as well? And um, I see that um, lovely, handsome man behind you. <laughs> Let's talk about these graphic novels that, you, that you're working on, because obviously with children's books, the illustrations need to um, complement and enhance the story. Obviously, but with graphic novels, you 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 actually have to bring in movement and action, don't you? Oh yes, it's so. You know, it's like I I'm being completely honest. When I was first um, getting onto this graphic novel, um, I was like, oh well, I mean, I made children's books and I do illustrations, and you know, like how hard can it be? Hard. <laughs> it can be very hard, um, but it is a really fun learning process because. It's also, you know, it's not even just the motion, it's making sure that you capture just everything in one frame, one little fraction of the page rather than the whole page. Um, and, you know, making room for text boxes because I'm also sort of doing a bit of the formatting as well and the layout for the um, the text. And I made the mistake on, you know, like a good few of the, sp uh, the spreads to, oh yeah, I'm getting all wrapped up in the art and it's like, well, it's gonna be covered by text. So really good job there. Um, so it's a very sort of like interesting thing because now the text is also a character that you're working with. And I think it's it's really fun because I when I was first working with it in InDesign, um, putting, I was thinking, oh yeah, I mean like the text is the text. No, the text box is also an actor on this. It's also a graphic uh, thing that I have to consider and make sure that it all works and just comes together as like a comprehensive and cohesive thing. Um, so, yeah, it's a very interesting new beast I'm dealing with now. So that that uh, gentleman behind you looks very Viking-ish. Is, <laughs> is, is, is this a Swedish graphic novel that you're working on? No, this was just for fun, actually. Um, so I'm a massive nerd. Uh, so uh, I play D and D, so Dungeons and Dragons, um, and that character uh, is mine. Uh, oh, he's a is paladin. that your avatar? No, gosh, um, no. He's like my uh, character who I play on on these um, role playing games, basically. You mean you play being him, or you play him? Right. Both, I guess. Okay. Have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons? No, I, I, take know, it you I know more or less the concept, but but yeah, tell us a little bit more about that. What's his oh, name? Yeah. What does he do? Oh, well, you know, this is uh, Aaron Thundersmith. Uh, he's a paladin um, and he, uh, well, in this current thing, it's a homebrew, so I'm about to nerd out here. But the DM that's running the session is a very talented writer um, and actually one of my clients and he's super fun um and in his world uh my uh paladin actually follows one of the gods that he's created in his world that's all about like 
war and fighting. And so, you know, he gets a real high from sort of like battle. And this was him doing his whole night trial. Um, so yeah, it, it was it's very, it's very nerdy. I, I realize that my cool factor has just plummeted. <laughs> no, I think that cool. sounds very cool. Wow. Well, yeah, and- stuff like this is really good for you know getting inspiration and really getting to, you know, just draw stuff because each session brings like a new thing that it's like, oh my gosh, that has to be immortalized. I have to sketch this. So yeah, it's a really good source of inspiration for me. <laughs> Now, people also commission you. You've done over 350 commissioned works of art. So do people come and say, oh, I want to, dr- I want you to draw my cat. I want you to take a photograph of our wedding and, and make a painting out of it. What kind of commissions do you get? Honestly, it can be as wild as that. <laughs> there was one time I went to a uh, business event and I was just hoping to just meet other sort of like individuals. It was locally here in Sweden. Um, and I talked to a lady and she was just like, oh, my my boyfriend's, uh, you know, birthday is coming up. I, I don't know what to get him. And blah, blah, blah. I was just like, oh, you could always get a portrait. He's like, could you do a portrait that quick? I was like, yeah. <laughs> it was like maybe a week or so. Um, and I had something for her in, you know, a few days. So sometimes it really is just like off the back talking to people um but a lot of it yeah character driven work I get most of I would say um which is great because characters are like my thing I love drawing expressions I love like interpreting people's written descriptions of their characters and making that into like a thing that they could actually see and visualize um and you know of course for like something like D&D or a game that they're playing they love to sort of like really sort of make their character real uh so that they can you know associate themselves with just like okay this is exactly what I was picturing and that is such a you know such a special thing when you actually get it right and they're just like that's exactly how I would see them or even when you don't get it completely right and it's just like I really like how you interpreted it like I like this version and, you know, so long as I get some response like that, then I've <laughs> done what I set out to do. Do you think, do you think I have, um, well, we have a friend, uh, Julie and I have a friend called Stephen Colgan, who is a, a remarkable artist and sculptor. And you name it, there's pretty much not anything artistic that he can't do. He is just fabulous. Um, although apparently he can't put up shelves. If you ask him to do DIY, <laughs> he can't do it. But anything else, if it's creative, he can do it. And he's always said, anybody can create art. Anybody. Do you believe that? Because Julie always says, I can't, I can't, I can't, I've only drawn stick figures. And I'm like, yeah, I can't even do that, actually. So, you know, when it comes to like art, drawing art, it, it, it doesn't. Um, yeah, I can't do it. So it's, it's like I said, to Stephen, no, seriously, I really can't do it. Um, but we had a session and you were there w- with us, weren't you, uh, Chanel, for one of our creative meetups. And the wonderful Daniel Moore led, of Iron Dragon Design, led our creative warm up, which was he took us through how to do a manga self-portrait. Now, unfortunately, I had to skip that because I was really ill. So maybe that could have been the one time he might have actually got me to draw something that didn't look like a pea or something. Um, but the 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 the... the Images that came out of that that I saw that people shared with me afterwards were actually really cool. And I was they were really I good. It. Do you believe everyone can draw? Yes, one hundred percent. I mean, uh, you know, in in the whole thing of like um, anyone can, you know, can anybody make art? Yeah, what is art? You know, I think there are some things in life that aren't necessarily. Uh, dance or you know a painting or even acting that can constitute as art like sometimes how people speak as an art you know because it's just like I have never seen anybody string a sentence together like that you know that is really kind of cool like you know but in terms of drawing you know I think there is so much uh hmm what's the word I think the whole sort of thing of like, it's a God-given talent, you're born with it or you don't have it. And it's can be partially that. It's just that you get a head start, maybe. 
you know, it's a skill just like any other. It can be practiced. It can be, you know, improved upon. Like, for instance, if I <laughs> if I drew the same way I did when I was, you know, a kid, like, you know, that's trash. You get what I mean? It's absolute trash. You know, some sometimes I look at my art from like previous years that everybody was like, oh my gosh, it's like when I was like 12 and I cringe like I literally go into hot sweats when I look at some of the art that I produced that I thought was absolutely banging at the time that I look now and I'm just like oh my goodness I cannot believe I was so proud of that you know (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. I don't know her like that wasn't me you know um it's something that you improve upon and I think the very act in sort of approve improving upon it and, you know, trusting the process and learning and, you know, there are foundations and fundamentals of art that anybody can learn and try their hands at or their feet at. Some people draw with their feet. Like, it's amazing. You know, the things that people come out come out with, it's just, you know, pixel art even. It stops on a screen and then people just make these most, the most beautiful, you know, digital tapestries. It's for everyone um there's hope and, for me yeah, yeah then chanel there's hope for you absolutely <laughs> well chanel if you can remember when you joined that networking event where we were um put through our paces and taught how to do a a, a, a portrait or a self-portrait or a caricature by daniel um this was mine um and i've never drawn anything like this and okay uh, it, it looks all skew and I've got a, I have a funny eye and it's, it's, it's not a major work of art, but I was incredibly surprised that I actually drew something that was recognizable as a human being. So, um, and, and of course we were very, um, impressed with you because you did yours so quickly. And of course that's what you do for a living. So can you take us through what um a rapid a, a rapid what do you call it a rapid session or a rapid sketch session because you are so quick at caricatures aren't you yeah. and yeah so so shows can you do can you do melanie and me of course i can i would love can to you? and and how long does it take how long do you think it'll take you to do a caricature of the two of us together give me 5 minutes okay well talk it through it share share us your screen can you do that Absolutely. And you know what I'll do? Um, or oh, maybe maybe you can even set a timer. Oh, well, okay, we'll set a time. We'll set a time. But but can I take do you are you going to um are you going to draw us from what you are seeing now on the screen? Yes. Okay, then I must take I'll take my glasses off then. I don't want to look like an old granny. That's perfectly okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. So so you tell me when you go when you're starting. The moment your pen starts, I'm gonna hit. Hit okay. The stopwatch. Great. I'm just gonna zoom in. Yeah. And now it's made you guys really, really small because of course it has. Right. Let me see if I can. There we go. I can make you guys a little bit bigger on the other screen. And there we go. Okay. So I've got you guys up on my other screen now. Now you're going to make a caricature, right? It's not a portrait. Yes. As such. Okay. Right. I'm going to do what I can in uh, five minutes so I don't take up so much time. Okay. Um, Let's see. There we go. Right. Okay. On your marks. Get set. Ready? Ready. Go. Okay. So first I'm going to start off with Melanie. And I'm going to just like just get a sort of rough shape there. And I'm going quite rapid fire here. Um, so first things first, I'm actually going to get a sort of rough shape of the glasses. Might not be completely accurate, but that's okay. Um, the one thing that I sort of, uh, learn with, uh, doing this is just to trust the process <laughs> and not be so, what's the word? Not so precious. Um, because I think when you try to, um, oh, I can you... already recognise her. <laughs> yeah, amazing. When you try to, um, what's the word? You 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 try to make it too perfect. I think that's when you actually um, end up screwing things up. <laughs> <laughs> 
So let's see. Right, no one minute gone. No problem. And I'm just going to get your head in there. So we actually have a head for you, Julie. Yes, please. I'm going to put you guys right up next to each other. Of course, height difference are not in consideration, difference but in consideration. that's fine. But that's fine. Let's see. I really love the silhouette of your hair, Julie. So let's see if I can get that in. I never know what my hair is going to look like from one day to the next. So. Ah, same. And then I'm just going to give you. You see, Melanie, I do have a big head. Look, look at my head compared to yours. <laughs> <laughs> and then here, I'm going to get that sort of lip shape in. That's amazing because I mean, I can see Melanie in that in that in in that sketch of her. I can just see her. It's just so lifelike, and you haven't even really done much. You just did like glasses and little eyes and wow. Right, two minutes gone. Problem. So gonna go in here. Sometimes we get wonky eyes. You just gotta have to deal with it. I'm used to a wonky eye. I I, I gave myself a wonky eye. So problem. And then the nose. You know the nose can really change how the face looks. Mm. And let's actually give you some eyebrows there, Melanie. I love how you both have such beautifully shaped eyebrows. <laughs> eyebrows are very important. They frame your eyes. <laughs> they do. <laughs> There's nothing worse than, than talking to somebody who's got awful eyebrows, uh, you know, whether they're too bushy or they these thin little things. It can really put you off your your conversation or your thought processes oh yes right so we're just going to three minutes I gone uh... not that i'm putting any pressure on you <laughs> i'd actually like to see we just actually we're not timing you and uh so that after five minutes the guillotine comes down it's just nice <laughs> to know how long it takes you to get to a point in the process and this is phenomenal i mean it's three and a half minutes and look what you've already put down and it's no problem and i can see uh, melanie like talking there but nothing's actually coming out you you mean words yeah <laughs> get that blush in there so you both got a little bit sort of going there we go Oops, wrong tool, wrong tool. Go away. There we go. I once had my portrait done by um, a rapid sketcher um, in Leicester Square in London. Oh yeah. And and he came 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 up with quite a good rendition, quite a likeness. It didn't look exactly like me, but you don't expect that really. Um, it's not a photograph. Yeah. I mean, that is the thing. It's it's sort of like knowing when to see, keep on going or when to call it. Because um, sometimes you'll get it right and sometimes you just have to sort of go with the next best thing. And I think that is the key. Do you actually have a bun going on, Melanie? Can't quite fully. All right. Okay. So let's see. Make your hair sort of Okay, it's five minutes now, but don't stop because okay, uh, sure. yeah, it's just a, amazing that you have done what you've done in just five minutes. That is amazing. Ah, oh, thank you very much. But yeah, that is essentially sort of uh, ironically that is how a sketch session will go. So I think that's what you were referring to before. This is where I literally uh, draw with people in real time and uh, sort of just give them something to work with. Okay, so that looks fantastic. That, ladies and gentlemen, was done in five minutes. Five minutes. Unbelievable. Okay, thank you, Chanel. Let's get on to your top tips for people who have an artistic talent, people who, who love art, who want to make money out of art, um, who want to do what you do. Uh, what are your top tips for people aspiring to live the life you live? 
wow, the, the life I live. <laughs> the, the, professional, the professional life you live. Right. Yes. Um, actually, it, yes, I do have a couple of tips. Um, so number one is uh, one I'm still struggling with. Don't undercharge. Um, get an hourly rate, set an hourly rate and really uh, think about what it is that you want to charge people. Um, I see too many artists charging minimum wage for their skills. It's not a minimum skill, you know, minimum wage skill job. Don't charge minimum wage, at least charge, you know, £10 plus. Okay, ten pound plus minimum wage, um, because it is a skill that you have been developing over the course of time. It's not something that you can just pick up and put down. So don't charge it as that. Um, second, please have a contract when working with people. Um, you know there are so many uh, templates for terms of service and terms and conditions. Um, just get one, look through it actually read it, make sure it's in a language that you understand, not legalese. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, something that intimidates people. It's literally to protect yourself. Even if it's a thing that says that, you know, should something happen, you know, should you, you know, have to take a bit longer that you have, you know, some wiggle room, how much you're expecting to get paid, um, how many revisions are included. These are just basic things to include in your terms of service. Um, third, this one is very difficult um, for some people. Uh, network, put yourself out there. Um, you know, nobody's just going to find you. You know, sometimes they don't even find you for your Instagram. Sometimes you actually have to get down and dirty um, and get yourself in some networking groups. Ah! You know, networking and artistry doesn't always mix, but there are some really fun places that you can do it, <laughs> such as the creatives. You know, there's so many uh, places that you can sort of network yourself without it being like, oh my gosh, I have to wear a pencil skirt and a suit. Like, don't even bother with that. Just take your time. Just put yourself out there and at least put it out there that you're there, you know, for people who might actually want to pay you your hourly rate. Um, and I do have a fourth one, if that's okay. Um, don't chase opportunities, make opportunities. So sitting around and waiting for people to say, I'm looking for an illustrator. You are going to be competing with like a hundred or so others who are also waiting for their opportunity to say, I'm an illustrator, please pick me. I need to eat. You know, everybody's got to eat. All right. Like it's just, not a high chance that you might get that client because they have so much choice. And honestly, I would be surprised if they don't get overwhelmed by how much choice they get. Make the opportunities and go out to people instead and say, you know, this is what I do. Like, do you, as an agency, would you need some extra hands? You know, go to corporate clients, potential clients and say, this is what I do. Do you need an extra hand? Here are my rates you know, be proactive and don't just sit around and wait. Um, it's very easy to do. Sometimes I fall into that thing, but it really, you know, if you have to weigh it up, you know, for each opportunity that I apply to is probably maybe a one in 50 chance that it actually comes back with something. So keep that in mind. Don't waste your time. And that's it. Wow. Very, very practical tips. Thank you very much for that. Now we're getting uh, to the end of our chat with you, Chanel, and we end off with um, delving into uh, a little bit of your creative psyche. Melanie is going to hold up um, a pack of cards and you are going to choose a card. And on that card is going to be a value and you are going to talk about that value. And just bear in mind, there are no right or wrong answers. Just answer the first thing that comes into your head. So if she says, what does it look like? And you think it looks like the marshmallow man, then say that. Okay. <laughs> there, there, there are no right or wrong answers. Yes. Okay. This is the on the couch bit of on the couch where we dig into your, your psyche, get you on the couch. Ooh. Talk about on the couch. Okay. And of course, right. laughing creatively about whatever card you pick. So hmm. I'm going to run my finger along the cards. You just yell stop when you want me to stop and pick a card. Stop. 
All right in the middle. Right in the middle. That's what me. did? Uh, 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 right. This is one we haven't had before, so it's quite nice to see what you come up with. Nice. You picked compassion. <gasps> oh, so okay. important. Really, really. So incredibly important. So um, we're going to ask you creatively about compassion. So first of all, what does compassion mean to you? What does it look like to you as an artist? Right. What does compassion mean and what does it look like? For me, compassion is really what, why art for humanity is so very important. You know, being able to sort of understand what people are going through or coming to you with, it, it allows you to reach a new level of understanding with whoever you're working with. Um, mm. I think it looks like <laughs> are you, the only thing that's coming to my mind is just being on an, an, a Zoom call like this and, oh. you know, just talking about, you know, your life. It's it's that little break in, you know, networking, networking. Here's my business. Here's what I do. Da, 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 da. And actually getting to meet the person behind it. You know, mm. I'm about to go pick up my kids. I'm making dinner. Life is hard, you know, because it isn't all, you know, roses and revenue. It's right. life. Um, and art is such a amazing way to connect with people and I think people don't tap into it nearly enough no I think that's true what does it feel like a hug oh, yeah. yeah I was just thinking that actually yeah like a warm snuggly like you know, my, my jumper's so soft that's what it feels like mine's soft too you know a, a warm hug or a really nice you know that cup of tea that touches your soul you know, a really warm cup of tea, you can feel it going down, like it warms you right from the inside, that. Mm. A really warm cup of tea or a really warm hug. Yeah, I like that. If it had a sound, what would it sound like? Nothing. Quiet. quiet. It would be, I see it as listening more so. Mm. Yeah. Like and that. you can't ask her what it tastes like because she's already told us it tastes like a <laughs> tea. It tastes like a cup of tea. <laughs> what does it smell like? What does it smell like? If it had a smell, what would it smell like? Ooh. Earthy, maybe. Like the ground, maybe even, ooh, maybe even like, um, what's that word called? I think it's petrichor. You had the scent of rain. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. I think that's the word. I've probably gone and <laughs> showed myself up. But um, yeah. Well, we <laughs> said there are no right or wrong answers. It's what, <laughs> it, what's, what comes first into your into your mind when you think about it? So it, it's, it's nice to just sometimes think or watch people grapple with the concept of something that's just not solid. Right. Um, and that's the fun of it. Yeah. Chanel, it's been wonderful talking to you. Thanks so much for coming on the couch. And uh, please stay in touch. Please join us uh, again at our networking events. It was wonderful meeting you. That's how we met you initially. You signed on and you joined us and we had a lot of fun getting to know you. So don't be a stranger and uh, hope to see you soon. Absolutely. Yeah. I had such a great time. <laughs> well, we had a great time talking to you. The problem with our show is that we have so many great guests that an hour just is not long enough and we could just talk and talk <laughs> and talk forever and ever and ever. Honestly. Amen. Um, we, we've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And so thank you so much for spending your, your morning with us. And thank you to our viewers for, for watching. And if you are a creative person and a lot of this has resonated with you about pricing, about networking or the horror of networking, come along to a creatives meetup because you know you can't advance your business if you're hiding away in a corner 
And we're really not scary. People who watched this show for quite a long time will know us well enough by now. No, 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 no. Melanie can be quite scary. When she (laughs) goes on a rant, she can be quite scary. I'm just warning you. Just warning you. Same though. (laughs) She well, just don't make any grammar mistakes if you're in front of (laughs) Julie because she gets very, very scary. She Uh gets very, very scary if you put a punctuation mark in the wrong place. God help you. I'm an absolute Nazi. I am. I'm a grammar <laughs> Nazi. people, really. And we have fun at our meetings. You know, we you do. do creative warm-ups. You, you'll be introduced to something new. Um, so even if you are a bit scared, by the time you've been through one of our little warm-ups, fun things that we do, by the time you get talking to people, you'll be so relaxed and so chilled about it. You know, you'll be absolutely fine. And you get to meet amazing people like Chanel. That's how we met Chanel. Sure. And uh, she she's become a friend so quickly. And uh we, we hope you're going to remain in our friendship circle, Chanel. It's been wonderful talking to you. No, it absolutely. Really has. Chanel's details has, have been going across the screen uh, throughout this interview. So please do make sure you give her a follow. Please do make sure that you check out uh, her art. And also, obviously, her details will be in the show notes. So if you want to reach out to her for a corporate project or a personal project, I'm sure she would love to help you for the absolutely. right price, of course. <laughs> Yeah, this lady ain't cheap. This lady ain't cheap. <laughs> no, exactly. She's a professional. She's a professional people. But a chat, that's free. Yeah, absolutely. Nice <laughs> cup of tea. Nice cup of tea. A nice cup of tea. Absolutely. Well, that's all we've got time for. So until next time, we'll see you. Mm-hmm.